the law of copyright, for example. And what I said at the beginning, this is the last point, but long point. Sorry. It's a good point. What I said was at the beginning was that the strategy and the idea of taking state power from me go together. What I mean by that is that they are both part of a constellation of struggle against capital. And this constellation, if you like the old constellation of struggle, of anti-capitalist struggle, has as its centre the idea that the struggle is the struggle of labour against capital. And the struggle of labour against capital assumes the existence of labour as wage labour and the things that the principal organisations as being the organisations of wage labour, that is to say trade unions and political parties. Labour is thought of as a unitary concept, so the idea of non-alienated labour or non-alienated activity is relevant only in relation to the future or possibly in relation to the past, but basically in relation to the future after the revolution. So the revolution is in the future, and the purpose of organization is to create the instruments for achieving this future revolution, namely strategy, party, taking state power, etc. But it seems to me that this constellation of struggle is now in crisis and that there is a new constellation arising. Really, this new constellation announces itself clearly for the first time in, in 1968. It receives its clearest, most eloquent articulation in the Zapatista uprising and its concept of dignity. It rolls through all the anti-movement, the movement against capitalist globalization with all its contradictions. And this new constellation has at its centre not the idea of the struggle of labour against capital, but it says, well, if we're going to struggle, struggle against capital, then we have to struggle against that which produces capital. And what is it that produces capital? Labour. It's labour that produces capital. So if we're going to struggle against capital, then we must struggle against labour. And so this new constellation poses the question of anti-capitalist struggle, not as the struggle of labour against capital, but the struggle against labour and therefore against capital. And this makes sense only if we open up the concept of labour. It makes sense only if we say that we cannot think of labour as a unitary concept, that we have to think of it as a self-antagonistic concept. We have to see that beneath labour is the capitalist labour. There is something else, there is the push towards shaping our own activity. There is a push towards a self-determined activity. And we are driven back to reading Marx again. And we read Marx and we see in the opening pages of Capital where he says the key, the pivot for an understanding of capitalism is the dual nature of labour. Something that Marx says so centrally at the start of, cap of Capital and then it simply disappears completely, but completely, from the whole Marxist tradition. And so we're brought to the idea that if we're going to talk about the struggle against capital as being the struggle against labour, and therefore capital, in fact what we are saying is that the struggle against capital is the struggle of an alternative activity or doing against capitalist labour. It is the struggle of non-alienated or anti-alienated labour doing what Marx calls conscious life activity against capital. And if we do that, then everything changes. Everything changes in terms of organisation and everything changes 
come sexually as well. Because what we're saying is if we say that the struggle is the struggle now of an alternative doing against capitalist labour, then we are saying that our struggle is the struggle to live now the society we want to create. We fight against capitalism by living now the society we want to create. In other words, revolution is here and now. Revolution is here and now, or it is not. And that means that instead of thinking of revolutionary activity, it's building the movement so that one day we will really get to revolution. We must think of revolutionary activity as breaking here and now with capital as developing these cracks, as building up an alternative doing here and now. And that might sound absurd, but it is actually what's happening. That is the way that anti-capitalist struggle is going. And the great problem with that is if you look at the anti-globalization movement, if you look at what's happening in Latin America, if you look at what's happening in, around the world, if you look at the Zapatistas the movement in Argentina, the movement in Bolivia, etc., etc., they are saying, no, we no longer are interested in the politics of demands. We shall now create the society we want. And if we try and impose a strategy on that, it's like, like putting a, a bridle on a wild horse. And that is terrible because finally we are the wild horse. We are unbridleable struggle against capital. Two implications of that, just two to, to, to end. First, if the struggle is the struggle against labour, the struggle of an alternative doing against labour and therefore against capital, then that means that our struggle is profoundly and necessarily asymmetrical in relation to capital. We are not like them, we do not want to be like them, we do not want to organize like them. We hate them, but we will hate them not by imitating them, but by doing something else. And that means, of course, that we do not go through the state, because the state is their organization with their patterns of behaviour, their language, their hierarchies, and we will not do that. And secondly, it means that if we think of struggle in this way, it means that we think of the struggle for communism, the struggle for another world, not in terms, not from the point of view of totality, but necessarily from the point of view of particularities, the point of view of this multiplicity of cracks, this multiplicity of paths. It used to be said that the, 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 an anti-capitalist revolution could not be interstitial. And it seems to me that that is absolutely and totally wrong. That the only way we can think of anti-capitalist revolution is in terms of an interstitial revolution, in terms of a movement from the interstices of capitalism. Or in other words, the only way I can think of revolution is in terms of the creation, extension and multiplication of these many cracks in capitalist domination. Asking we walk always. Asking we walk. Thank you very much.